Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barrongo e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two and Seri. In the news tonight, measles quarantine difficult but necessary. Illegal taxi passengers not eligible for compensation. And significant drop in brucellosis cases. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Residents of Wainandoi on the outskirts of Navo are living in fear following confirmed cases of measles in the area. Those residing in Wailali settlements say the isolation and quarantine process has restricted them from their daily movements, such as not reporting to work or attending school, which went on break last week. Kelly Vadala visited the community and reports the quarantine measures were taken by the health ministry to ensure the disease is confined. This mother of two thought her eldest son, Angelo, was just having a normal fever until a trip to the doctors proved otherwise. You had a uh, bad cough hey. and also he had rashes hey. all over his body with uh, red eyes and uh, it uh, appeared for, he had it for two weeks. My husband took him to the hospital. They actually, they didn't know it was measles. Maurice says her whole family was later vaccinated, but they remained in isolation for about a fortnight. Police came, they told us not to go anywhere. They just wanted us to stay, at, uh, <coughs> stay in our homes. Baby Iowani, who is just four months old, is the youngest in this community to have contracted measles. Since his release from the Navo Hospital, health officials and police have been closely monitoring him and his family. He started having really bad rashes along with really high fever. His temperature wasn't normal. The mucus that he started to cough out was not the kind you would expect from a child. As soon as we went to the hospital, we were referred to the emergency department. We were isolated to one room until a doctor came and confirmed it was measles. Etuatilala's daily work for his faith has also not been spared. It's unfortunate that we cannot carry out our missionary work in the restricted areas that were under quarantine. The affected people were isolated for at least two weeks. The number of confirmed measles cases in the country remains at 13. The latest are a 22-year-old from Wailali settlement and a 16-year-old from Navuni Kambi, both in the Seronamosi subdivision. Meanwhile, the University of Fiji graduation planned for December 6 has been postponed due to the recent measles outbreak. Break. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Drivers who don't comply with the conditions of their license and operate a rental or private vehicle as taxis are not eligible for compensation. The Accident Compensation Commission of Fiji clarified there is no guarantee of redress for drivers who continue to breach the regulations. This comes as a number of reports continue to surface of private vehicles being illegally used to transport paid passengers. Koroi Tandulala reports. Fijians need to be aware of certain exclusions when getting into private vehicles or rental cars that illegally operate as taxis. The Accident Compensation Act and its regulations provides uh, certain exclusions. And one of the exclusions is basically not complying with the conditions of your license. Uh, and the other exclusion uh, is around your, the, your driver's license not matching the class or use for which you are the, the, of the vehicle. That, that, that you're driving. The increasing number of private and rental cars illegally operating as taxis has forced the Land Transport Authority to relook its regulatory framework. The LTA board has agreed a moratorium on all uh, new rental permits and hire permits for at least 12 months to allow us to revamp or reform the regulatory framework for rental cars and hire cars. ACCEF Chief Executive Parvez Akbar is also urging Fijians to prioritize their safety and refrain from getting into vehicles illegally involved in public transportation. Uh, I would discourage that behavior because um, you, um, you have no guarantees about the, the condition of the vehicle, uh, the background of the driver, etc. So there's uh, there's less redress in terms of if, if something does happen. Agbar says while their core function is to pay compensation, 
They're also playing a proactive role in ensuring Fijians realize that safety is also their responsibility. Corita Dolala, FBC News. A massive reduction has been recorded in brucellosis cases this year, with only eight cases recorded compared to 31 in 2018. The Agriculture Ministry says they were able to reduce the numbers successfully due to continuous assessments and monitoring. Sanyani Mboilo reports. The Fijian dairy farms were hit by brucellosis in 2009, with over 2,000 cases recorded in the past 10 years. From 2009, when we detected first detected uh, re-emergence uh, till 19th November this year, uh, we have, as you see the graph, uh, we had huge number of animals that were de detected, uh, and we started culling these animals, uh, and then there were slight fluctuations along the way, and then now you can see that uh, we are almost going down. Agriculture Permanent Secretary Ritesh Dayal says hotels are importing over seven million dollars worth of beef annually as a lot of cattle were killed following the outbreak of brucellosis. Um, the government is fully behind this national effort to eradicate this disease. In the last two years um, you may be aware that the government through the Ministry of Agriculture has provided funding of at least 5.6 million dollars to address this issue. Another $2 million has been provided during that time to help to rehabilitate farms that were severely debilitated by these diseases. An 8% drop was recorded in dairy production in 2017, and as a result, the sector was only able to meet half of Fiji's milk demand. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. In light of the increasing road fatalities and accidents, the Police Traffic Division Unit has set the wheels in motion for their festive season joint operation. More than 15 divisional traffic officers gathered in Suva today to strategize ways in which they can reduce road accidents. Pranita Prakash reports just this month alone, seven people died on our roads. Renewed efforts are being made to reduce the road death toll as we approach the festive season. We have a 65 death uh, last year compared to 55 death this year. Every death is a concern to Fiji Police Force. Every road fatality is a concern to Fiji Police Force. And again, we are looking forward for the support of the communities. SSP Mahesh Mishra says with November to January considered as festive period, they anticipate an increase in movement during this time. There will be a multiple tasking in terms of our checkpoints. It's not only traffic policing. There will be other activities, search of vehicles, search of persons, uh, suspected uh, subject who have been involved in criminal activities. And uh, it will be a, a general policing approach. Earlier in the year, police had apprehended drug peddlers at checkpoints. The people also believe increased police presence will deter drivers from breaking rules. I think drivers have to change their attitude. I don't think so. The driver should be changed. Speeding remains a major concern as this has claimed the lives of 19 people so far. Dangerous and careless driving is registered as the second major cause for accident. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Up ahead, new UN report warns of bleak climate change outlook. And new vehicle weight limits expected. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. More effort is needed to address the threat of climate change. This has been highlighted in the latest report by the United Nations Environment Programme, which states that we are not doing enough to reduce carbon emission to 40% by 2030. Chosaina Nunga reports this issue will be discussed during the Conference of Parties 25 that will be, well, that will be held in Spain next month. Spain's acting ambassador to Fiji, Daniel Montilla, has supported the findings of the report released by UNEP. Indeed, 
the latest uh, United Nations Environmental Program report provides scientific data that tell us a very inconvenient truth, and that is we are not doing enough to tackle climate change. And uh, we need, the report states, we need even higher level of ambition to achieve uh, the Paris Agreement. Measures to review the current pace of industrialization in most developed countries will be the topic of discussion in next month's COP25 meeting in Madrid, Spain. Fiji will also be represented. The role of Fiji is to, through the Talanoa sessions, gather the international community, exchange their experience. We know from all the reports we received that the situation is worrying. That is why Germany and Europe too must act here. Fiji is hopeful that after COP25, most developed countries will come to an agreement and strategize measures to reduce carbon emissions to 40% as stipulated in the Paris Agreement. Over 30 Fijians will participate in the meeting from the 2nd to the 13th of next month. Chosei Nunuga, FBC News. The trial of a man alleged to have forced minors into prostitution continued in the Suva High Court today. 38-year-old Chosevata Werelangi faces one count of aggravated sexual servitude and three counts of domestic trafficking of children. Catherine Krishna reports. While being cross-examined, the 19-year-old witness told the court that on July 15, 2015, she followed Werelangi to Samabula Suva to have fish and chips. The girl stated that she was hungry and had not eaten anything at home as her mother was the only person earning and feeding the family. She also revealed that at no point was she forced or threatened to trouble with the accused. The girl said that on the other hand, she did whatever Werelangi told her to do and this landed her in prostitution. The court also heard that Verelangi paid the fare from Nosuri to Suva and later walked to Rewa Street and sold the girl to a man for sex. The girl also revealed that Verelangi instructed her to follow a man to his house where the incident happened. The trial continues tomorrow. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Sadalpa and opposition leader Siti Veni Ramboka has clarified Posedi Mbone's position in the party. Mbone, a former Fiji Labour Party parliamentarian, has been labelled by Ramboka as one of the top political advisers for Sadalpa. Ramboka says Mbone is one of their email supporters and he proposes some of the things to be done in the party. Despite Mbone's previous involvements with other political parties like FLP, Ramboka has he praise on his input to Sadalpa. Uh, I didn't know Mbune was involved in any other party. Uh, he had been uh, constructive in his contribution uh, in uh, the, the development of the party and policies. The Land Transport Authority will be introducing a new load limit from next year. While discussions to determine the weight limit continues, the LTA has hinted it will be lowered. Apinisa Wangarandova reports. The LTA has reached a consensus with all concerned parties to change the current weight limit in place. The weight limit changes next year. Right. The, the agreement that uh, we have, uh, that all parties signed up to, was that we move to uh, a, a new lower weight limit next year. Cane lorry operators have often complained about this issue and the LTA chief executive says a meeting will be held to iron out the issues. I'm going to meet with the Sugar Association, uh, Sugar Corporation rather, next week to discuss next year's sugar cutting campaign, that's the 2020 campaign. Many motorists feel that lowering the limit will help save our roads from early deterioration. Good, uh, it will maintain our road conditions. It's good for us, the lorry operators, and also for the roads. The bad condition, and uh, while we are traveling, uh, following the trucks, it is dangerous to overtake them. The weight limits are decided based on size of vehicles and is implemented to create a reasonable balance ensuring that motor vehicles are operated safely. Apenison Gardobu, FBC News. And Kelly joins us now with the latest from business. Thanks Jackie. Coming up after the break, FNPF's offshore investment rose by over $290 million. And in growing Fiji, options for new park in Lambasa are open, says Minister. Stay with us. I'm
Nisa. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. And we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. हम नाम सागर रेड्डी है हम लोग स्कूल में हम लोग घर में और कई भी रहता हम लोग खाली मिर्ची एफ एम सुनता गोल टाउन तावा में मिर्ची एफ एम दागो मामा मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हार्ट Offshore investment by the Fiji National Provident Fund grew by 36% in the 2019 financial year. The FNPF annual report shows offshore investments of over $400 million, an increase of over $294 million when compared to the previous financial year. Considering the growth in offshore activity, the fund's dividend income rose to $31 million compared to $16.4 million in 2018. FNPF Chief Executive Chao Chikoroi says this contributed to the increase in overall investment income. The investment income. Uh, it has gone up by 179%. In 2009, we used to have the annual income was 227 million. Uh, 2019 is 635 million. One of the largest bank in Fiji says lending has not been subdued in 2019. ANZ Fiji Chief Executive Saad Minam believes interest rates are commensurate with the market situation. He adds if there emerges an environment where ANZ sees the need to reduce rates further, it will do so. He says the Blue Bank has continued to offer loans to anyone who meets minimum requirements. We have not refused anyone who falls under our category of risk. Where we feel there's a good business, we should do it. We have yet to refuse anyone just because of this that we don't have money, you know. So our growth has been no issues at all from our side, from an ANZ perspective. And Sinifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the trading market. Major currencies were steady today as traders looked ahead to the final phase of U.S.-China trade talks and a shortened holiday week in the United States. The U.S. dollar, along with its Aussie and Kiwi counterparts, remained broadly unchanged after U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell reiterated the central bank's position that their policy is appropriate where it is now and an adjustment in interest rates is not warranted. While President Trump's comments kept the bullish mood in the U.S. stock market alive, major currencies were on hold with many market participants now hesitant to make big bets before they see the actual deal with China. Ongoing U.S.-China trade talks throughout next week will also be highly scrutinized as the December 15 tariff deadline approaches. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Thanks, Sinifa. Here today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar was on the rise with gains against the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback. It also rose against the kina, the euro and the yen, but slipped against the currencies of Australia and New Zealand. Looking at commodity prices, oil prices continued on the rise at over $58 per barrel. Gold was up at $1,459 per ounce. And silver closed higher at 17.03 per ounce. In growing Fiji, the local government ministry is keeping its options open for a chance to fully rebuild Subrail Park in Lambasa since the current facility is unfit for use. Minister Pramil Kumar says after recently rehabilitating the park, they discovered that it was still not safe for international tournaments. Josiana Anunga reports rebuilding the park will cost a lot of money. Premier Kumar says her ministry will undertake this project if approved by the government in the next financial year. We cannot just uh, undertake uh, repairs to that park because the damage is so extensive that it requires a lot more money uh, to go in to fix that place. And if you're going to spend so much money fixing the current park, it's better for us to invest it into a new park. So we will be making a request uh, in the next budget. Meanwhile, repair work for Govin Park in Ba is underway. Following the devastation of Cyclone Winston in 2016, Kumar says the work is due for completion next year. 
So, as I said, for any project, it's a, it's a phased project. In other words, it's not that everything will be done in that particular year. So the areas they have identified, uh, what needs to be done further, obviously they have to put in their submission uh, in the next budget. And then that can be completed. The ministry will continue upgrading these facilities until they add power with international standards and can accommodate international tournaments. Shosei Nunga, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest from sports. Thank you, Kelly, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, BG7's wrap-up preparations and career switch for national footballer. Details coming up. Zola Anguela, o veteranugu, o Itabua. Aku dah tali tayin na warong na bola FM, nampak dua nasir. Bola, alam gono, lutoka, dah tali takan bola FM bertanding nampak dua nasir. Ni bola mana ka? Nampak yang gono sam bola FM ngah. Eh nak kasih? Nampak gono sam tu aktif yang nampak bola FM nampak dua nasir musuh. Ni bola mana ka? Nampak gono Jerry yang belum pasah. Aduh warong ngah nampak bola FM nampak dua. Bola FM nampak dua nasir. Fiji Airways Fiji 7s wrapped up their preparations in Nandi today before flying out for the Dubai 7s, which kicks off next week. With the World Series preceding the Olympics, coach Gareth Babe anticipates competition to be tougher than ever for the defending champions. Felipe Nakaso has more. Hitting the hard yards, the Fiji 7s team is expecting a tough new series and will be looking to continue their momentum from the previous series. Well, it's not going to be easy, that's for certain. I mean, nothing's easy. and. You know, we had to fight for everything that we got last year and the year before, and we know how just how difficult that's going to be. The players also know too well that any team is capable of winning the tournament. It'll be a tough one. You know, uh, all, all, all uh, big teams in the world they, uh, have their eyes on us, and uh, it'll be tough uh, uh, maintaining uh, the number one in the world. And uh, it is also, you know, into the boys. They are working hard for it, and uh, uh, we'll take uh, one step at a time. The side has been preparing for the past month and coach Gareth Baber is confident of a good outing. We keep moving in the right direction. Uh, you, know, you never quite know where you are until obviously you take your first uh, game in anger, shall we say. Uh, and that's going to be Japan next Thursday. So you know, we'll learn as we go through that tournament as well. The national side will leave tomorrow for the Dubai 7th tournament, which starts next Friday. Philip and I, Caso, FBC Sports. After a good outing at the Oceania Sevens earlier this month, the next challenge for the Fijiana Sevens is in Dubai. The side has been working hard to eliminate weaknesses that let them down in the first tournament of the Women's Series in Glendale, USA. Sabi Wanga has more. Assessing their past games in Glendale and the Oceania Sevens, the Fijiana Sevens is focusing on key areas that need improvement. That, that was a good outing for the team Fijiana. Uh, some... Uh, some uh, key emphasis that we've managed to learn from the Oceania is how we maintain the continuity of our of, of the ball and, and uh, holding on to, holding the ball into contact and keep uh, grinding the faces, uh, which is hard in sevens. Coach Fully says maintaining possession will be vital in Dubai. If you control the ball one, two, three minutes, there's a high chance of um, uh, breaking the defense line. Uh, the other area is how we've managed to go, to improve on our aerial battle. Captain Rusila Nangasau says a lot of hard work has been put in during training. It's been there for us. Uh, um, most of uh, the we started back in Glendale and we didn't reach our uh, target. And that is to be in the top eight. But for us coming back, uh, going back to train, and he's been telling us uh, what to do. Uh, he's been um, putting every hard yards, uh, especially going to the sand dune and training there, and be back and winning the Oceania qualifier for us uh, from there. Uh, it's just not the end of it, but. That's where we're going to start back. This will be a first for the Fijiana Sevens to play a back-to-back -back tournament in the World Sevens Series. The side will face Australia in their first match at 12 a.m. next Friday. Salve Wanga, FBC Sports.
Meanwhile, the Fijian a seven side for the Dubai and Cape Town tournament was named this afternoon. National Rugby League Women's Centre Roella Randini Avuni has fought her way back into the squad. Randini Avuni played for the Mbulikula against the Papua New Guinea Orchids and the Australian Prime Minister's 13 earlier this year. Rusila Nangasa will captain the side once again, while veteran halfback Ana Maria Rungitha has not been considered due to injury. Organizers of the Coral Coast Sevens are making an effort to develop women's rugby further and boost, boost equality on and off the field. The annual tournament will host 12 women's teams at next year's event. Tournament director Jay White says they aim to promote equality in all facets of the tournament. About 600 players and officials will be part of this year's Fiji Girls National Provincial Rugby Championship. The competition has grown exponentially since its inception in 2017, with this year's tournament to host teams from 14 provinces. Aquila Dama has more. Women's rugby development in the country continues to gain momentum with 41 teams from various provinces set to take part in the girls and PC this week. It's only been a few years uh, for, for Fiji rugby to put up a structured competition for, for our women and our young females. And there's more exciting stuff uh, to come through uh, in the next uh, few months and next, uh, next year as well uh, with regards to women's rugby in Fiji. The new teams this year are Northland and Ovalau. Sewambu says the tournament has seen rapid growth. As we try to build a, a good base, uh, knowing the, um, uh, the, the spike uh, you know, in, in participation for women's rugby all across the world and, and also here in Fiji. Fiji Rugby Union referee Koini Vuli says the competition has presented an amazing opportunity for the girls. They will be the one that benefits in 10, 15 years' time. And uh, with the women's now qualifying uh, Tokyo, and one step away from Rugby World Cup, the senior players are paving that way. These guys will probably pave the way for professional rugby. We don't know. The Fiji Girls National Provincial Championships will be held this Friday and Saturday at Lautaka's Churchill Park. Akui Ladama, FBC Sports. Oceania Rugby hopes that New Zealand and Australia will commit to future Oceania Women's Championships. Former National Women's Football Rep Sophie Ndialuwai will debut as a so, sorry, as an Oceania Football Confederation assistant referee next month. She's been selected to be part of the referees panel for the 2019 OFC Under-16 Girls Championship in Tahiti. The LOI started refereeing in 2016 and first attended a referees course at Senganga Primary School, but could not continue then because she was still playing for the national team. She says her dream is to officiate at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Juventus held on to a 1-0 lead to defeat a tough Atletico Madrid side in this morning's UEFA Champions League. Right winger Paolo Dybala scored from a free kick at the stroke of halftime to seal the win for the Italian side. Meanwhile, in other matches, Real Madrid drew 2 all with Paris Saint-Germain. Aston Villa defeated Newcastle 2-0 in round 13 of the English Premier League. Villa easily scoring the two goals from free kicks before halftime. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Huawei introduces a 10.8-inch MatePad Pro to compete with iPad Pro. Find out more after the break. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife. We listen to Radio Fiji to a very good program, a very good program, number one radio. Kumar Sahib and Naik Kev, Gongo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2, we feel good to hear the whole song. Kumar, I don't have to listen to Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2, the country's country. In new media, Huawei has unveiled an iPad Pro-like tablet. Take a look. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's been wonderful with cool spells. Sunshine has limited its spread. Now, now, I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's going to be okay. We made it halfway. Now, in the West, it was and it still is mainly dry with periods of sunshine. 
It's the school holiday, so I hope the kids are making the most of it. But do keep safe. Eastwards from Pekhavarasuva, gloomy conditions throughout with showers expected for later tonight. And up north, the clouds saw some sunshine with light drizzles. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 7.56 tonight with low tide at 2.25 a.m. Sunrise at 6.20. Now looking at tomorrow, it will be dry for a time with spells of hazy sunshine, although there is a risk of few spots of rain later. Tomorrow's temperatures, the northern and western divisions take on the lead with highs of 31 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, how much we adore this day. And let me tell you, it's going to be very settled. And that's all the weather from the weather world. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, do you know what to do if you were exposed to measles? I don't know. Uh, I will go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. Uh, I will go to the hospital to seek medical attention. I'll go to the hospital so that I don't spread it to my family. I would uh, stay in the I stay with the people and seek medical help. Just take care of myself and... Uh, Keep away from the people. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, dairy farmers are now using a new technique in hopes of increasing milk production. Recapping the main stories for tonight, measles quarantine difficult but necessary, illegal taxi passengers not eligible for compensation, and significant drop in brucellosis cases. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking... Do you think the color coding of taxi number plates will stop illegal operations? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day sent in by Baba Reddy from Thambia, Lambasa. No early morning traffic hassle for those living in this area. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. I'm Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajnita Lata and I'm from Vatulalo Bagh. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot.